welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks and part two of making this drill adapter for your milling machine table. And what this adapter does is it attaches to your drill and goes right into the handle that drives your table up and down. And this is a quick, easy device to make and it's a big time saver to raise and lower your table. I think you guys would like it. In the first video what I did is I prepped the material then over at the milling machine I showed you how to line up and drill these holes without using a rotary table and I think you guys will enjoy that. Now we're going to take these brass pins, solder them into place, come back over to the lathe and turn down this shape and get this project finished up. Solder in my opinion is one of the best ways to hold metal together, especially dissimilar metals like steel and brass. It seems to hold better than anything out there I know of, including Loctite. It's a simple process. It takes a lot of heat and no skill. What we do want to do is we're going to put some flux in here. And the flux actually cleans up the surfaces and gets rid of any of the oxidations that would cause the solder not to stick to the metals. And the great thing is here, once these pins are in place, we just have to hit them with heat. There's no skill involved and it will hold forever. But it is going to take a while. There's a lot of material here that has to be heated up before the solder will even start to melt. But I've got some time. That is all it took to solder that up. You know, I didn't take into account that I'm going to end up having to clean the solder out of those pins. But for now, I think it'll work just fine. Now, let's head over to the lathe and finish up this project. Here we are back at the Enco lathe. Kind of disappointed in how the soldering worked. I mean, it's going to work out fine. I know it's going to hold the pins. I just wanted it to be a little prettier, but that's okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to chuck it into the lathe on this side. We're going to turn this outside diameter down here and just get that ready to go. Finish off these pins, flip it around, and then do whatever pattern I want to do on that side. So let's get to work. What's great is the diameter on this is not critical. It's just where do you want it to be? You can have it too large. You don't want to go too small, but it doesn't have to be dead on. So this is going to take a while. There's a lot of material to take off of this to get it down to size. I'm used to using the bigger lathe over there where I'm, you know, I'm doing quarter inch, half inch cuts with uh, carbide inserts. So um, let's just say it's going to take me a lot longer than I really planned, but I'll bring you back to the critical points.
that was kind of fun. I definitely was pushing this material past its working, well, definitely pushing material past what it can handle heat-wise. Look at the change in color right there. I just did it just because of the fun of it. I've never uh, pushed this lathe that hard before. Um, and it worked okay. You know, it's one of those funny things that a lot of people want to know what different feeds and speeds are. And I got to say the metal tips and tricks way is try it and see what happens. This was definitely pushing it too far. Every lathe is different. Every cutter is different. You know, formulas for manual machines are a great ballpark. But really when you're talking feeds and speeds, you're really talking, in my opinion, it's more about for CNC operators to get their machines pushed to their limit to where they are effective. And manual guys like me, it's what can you get away with for that one part? You know, tool life isn't as important to me as it is for a CNC operator. So we've got this basically down to size. I'm not going to touch it, of course, right now. Um, this diameter here is almost half inch, and that's what the drill chuck is going to clamp onto. This here is 0 .900, so it's almost a one inch. We have to remember that there's a 5 eighths inch hole that goes through here an inch and a half, so we want to leave enough wall thickness on that to make sure there's enough structure. We're really close here. I'm going to add a couple extra little tricks to this just to make it look cool. I want to knurl this right here. I found that this one being smooth, it's really kind of cool looking, but the one, I have another one that has been knurled here, and you grip it, and it just feels right. So I want to add that to this one. And, um, oh, even that's warm. The chuck's warm. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't do what I just did. Let me say, I did the experiment for you so you don't have to. So let me get back to turning here and get this set up for neural. I got a little bit more work I want to do to it to polish it out, but let's take a look at it. The knurl came out really nice. I'm going to do some stuff off camera and get this polished up to where it looks beautiful. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, give me some thumbs up. Also give me some of your comments. I'd love to hear from you. And remember, till next time, go out in your shop build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.